happy part two, y'all. Um, so I decided to make a part two and I decided to do that because one of my subscribers asked me some questions in the comment section that has had my brain kind of reeling a little bit. And I thought, well, I can answer them. Um, but then I just thought I didn't, I didn't want to do it in the comment section. I thought, well, I'll just make a video. And then what I'll do is, um, I'll share some more quotes that didn't make it in the first the, in the first video and we'll just we'll just talk about this stuff it'll be great okay so let's discuss these questions listen I I'm gonna do the best I can like I'm still learning too okay but I am so glad that you asked these questions because I think they're awesome okay I'm gonna paraphrase because I don't remember exactly what you said but basically this I'm gonna I wish I knew your name I'll call you friend okay the friend our friend okay he's or they I don't know what Gosh, <laughs> so awkward. It's the same thing every time. Okay. The question was, how will people still have their own religions and beliefs? Why wouldn't Jesus just tell them to join the LDS church? Okay, that's the first question. Well, um, they will still have their their own religious beliefs. And that is true even with, within the spirit world. Like after you die, it's like, it's kind of the same thing. Like you're going to have your free agency. But I did find some quotes from Brigham Young that I would like to share um, just so that people have them. And then we'll discuss this a little bit more. So um, let's see. Brigham Young says, if Latter-day Saints think when the kingdom of God is established on earth, that all the inhabitants of the earth will join the, the church called Latter-day Saints, they are egregiously mistaken. I presume there will be as many sex and parties then as now. Still, when the kingdom of God triumphs, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ to the glory of the Father. Even the Jews will do it then. But will the Jews and Gentiles be obliged to belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? No, not by any means. They will cease their persecutions against the Church of Jesus Christ, and they will be willing to acknowledge that the Lord is God and that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Okay, his next quote says, The order of society will be as it is when Christ comes to reign a thousand years. There will be every sort of sect and party, and every individual following what he supposes to be the best in religion, and in everything else similar to what it is now. Okay, and then his last quote is, In the millennium, men will have their privilege of being Presbyterians, Methodists, or infidels, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but they will not have the privilege of treating the name and character of deity as they have done heretofore. No, but every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to the glory of God, the father, that Jesus is the Christ. Okay. Well, let's talk about this. So as I talked about in the last video, um, the earth will be cleansed and Jesus will come. The first resurrection will happen. And so we need to look at who is who is a part of the first resurrection. So as I taught yesterday, I don't want to lose my place. Hold on. Oh, there's a pen. Okay, sorry. I got all these books. Um, as I taught yesterday, those who will inherit or who will be resurrected, who will be on, um, on the earth in the millennium, will be those of the celestial um, and terrestrial bodies okay okay so on the earth there are going to be people that were that they sorry they were baptized um i have a really bad headache right now i need some caffeine um people who were baptized who kept the commandments who were true to the faith even in persecution i'm going i'm going by the manual um the gospel principles manual uh, people who were married um, in the temple, people who were endowed, right? Um, but also those who would who would receive that, who are open to it, that have died and not having that, they will have that opportunity too, right? That's why missionary work is going to be important. But he also said in that quote that um, that terrestrial beings will be on the earth. Okay, so who are those people? Those are people who... Um, in the terrestrial world, people who rejected the gospel on the earth, but later received it in the spirit world. So you got to look at it that way. Like, um, people who will be on the earth that aren't going to be burned in that cleansing are people who they're good people and 
they're more than likely they will accept the gospel. Same as in the spirit world. Is this making sense? Because I'm trying to correlate between um, who's going to inherit a terrestrial kingdom and also on the earth before that final judgment comes, those terrestrial bodies. Like Jesus knows who they are, so he's not going to burn them up. Is this making any sense? I hope so. In my mind, it makes sense. Um, so these were honorable people, but they, it says they were blinded to the gospel of Jesus Christ by the craftiness of men. They are also, um, these are also they who received the gospel and a testament of Jesus Christ, but then were not valiant. Okay. So I, I hope that's making sense. Um, and, and so your question is when Jesus comes, why won't he just tell them? Okay, well, if he told them, then that would be infringing on their agency. On you know, like that's that's Satan's plan. Satan's plan is that we all make it, right? That's what he wanted. And so, Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are never going to take away our agency. We're always going to have the right to choose, and we all have to have that opportunity. And that might sound like it, it might be like, well, well, you know, like why? But how are you going to learn and grow if you don't? Um, that, did that make sense? Wait, <laughs> my head is killing me. If you don't get to make your own decisions, how are you going to learn if you don't get to make your own decisions? Sorry. Oh, my head. If it wasn't hurting so much, I probably would make more sense. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe not. Okay. Your next question was, why would people choose to go with Satan after the thousand years? If all will be answered in the thousand years, why would anyone choose to leave God's truth and light? This is a great question. Okay. Well, let's go back to our pre-mortality. Why would anyone choose to leave our Heavenly Father? A lot of this, and with both scenarios, it stems in pride. You know, pride is the downfall of man, right? And so in, in, pre, in our pre-mortal existence, the adversary was very prideful. And so were his followers. And they, and you know, he wanted that glory and he was able to tempt them and pull them away so in in the millennium during that once the adversary is released everyone we all have to face that temptation we all have to face our adversary we have to that's part of the plan and so even though i mean there will be i, mean, I can't even imagine the, the spirits that are held in back right now until they can be born in the millennium. They have to be like amazing, but some of them will, will fall and some of them will repent and they'll be like, no, I want to come back. And you know, like, I don't know how that's going to work. I just know that we all have to face the adversary and be tempted. That's just, that's the plan of salvation. That's the way it goes. And why would anyone leave? I don't know. Well, you know, Laman and Lemuel, they saw an angel of light and they still wanted to kill Nephi, you know? Um, We've got the witnesses of the Book of Mormon. They walked away um, and then came back. Um, you know, you, you can even look to that in, in your own personal life. You know, like I, like I will use me as an example. So I have been fighting a screen addiction for years. And I permanently deleted my social media accounts. But I still have an, a screen addiction because of YouTube. I don't have games or anything like on, on my phone like that. But I, I struggle with YouTube because I want to gain knowledge. And, and knowledge is great. But too, even too much of a good thing is not good. And so here the Lord gave me dreams way back. If you guys go back and look those dreams up and how it's bondage. My cell phone is a type of, well, it's a cell right? Cell phone, like I'm in a prison cell. <laughs> um, but still here in my, like in my video and pornography, what did I say? I quoted, um, uh, Dr. Adam Smith, I think his name was, but he said in our sorrow and suffering, don't tend to, don't turn to sin, turn to the savior. So I've been dealing with a lot a lot lately and I don't have a car and I'm at home and I'm by myself all day and we don't have a swimming pool in our neighborhood. So I'm, sometimes it's just sad. Like I'm tired of doing laundry. I want to do something else. So what do I do? I get on my phone. So, um, I don't mean to ramble on, but my point is, is that here God gave me these two beautiful dreams and he, and he's telling me he's helping me. Well, I say two beautiful dreams. He gave me several dreams of warning 
and then gave me beautiful rev revelation interpretation is what he did because some of them were scary because the adversary was tempting me but I still messed up so you know whether that's on a grand scale or or a small scale we're gonna make mistakes that's that's but what that's what the Savior came for and that that atonement his atonement um, is eternal eternal it's it's both um, forwards and backwards right so it will continue to work as long as we have faith in it and use it use him and turn to him I hope this has answered your questions um, I hope so I guess if you have more go ahead and ask me I don't know that I'll do another video but <laughs> but um, I did want to uh, read a couple more quotes that didn't make it into the last video. Oh, darn. I'm losing them. Okay, I'm just, I don't want this video to be too long. So, um, what's this one? Okay, we're going to, I'm going to read this one. This is by Wilford Woodruff, and he said, um, so remember, wickedness is going to increase, right? It will increase, but remember, President Nelson said that he was optimistic about the future, then he did say that things will get worse before they get better. Okay. So I want to read this quote. It says, um, let's see, where are we at? Okay. My testimony is this unto all men and nations that you live in the age in which God will bring to pass the fulfillment of that word of prophecy and prediction, which has been spoken by all the prophets since the world began. Thrones will be cast down. Nations will be overturned. Anarchy will reign. All legal barriers will be broken down. And the laws will be trampled in the dust. You are about to be visited with war, the sword, famine, pestilence, plague, earthquakes, whirlwinds, tempests, and with the flame of devouring fire. By fire and with the sword will God plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord will be many. Okay, stop right there. Did you hear that? Like, some of us will fall victim. Like, it's it's just going to happen. Um, it says the anger of the Lord is kindled. Well, it already has ha happened, right? Many have become martyrs um, for the cause. It says the anger of the Lord is kindled and his sword is bathed in heaven and is about to fall upon the um, Idumia. Idumia? Idumia? Idumia. Or the world. That's what that word means. It means the earth. The fig trees are leafing and the signs of all heaven and earth indicate the coming of the Son of Man. The seals are about to be opened. The plagues to be poured forth. Your rivers and seas will be turned to blood and to gall. And the inhabitants of the earth will die of plagues. The question may be asked why these judgments are coming upon the world in these last days. I answer, because of the wickedness of the inhabitants thereof, the whole earth is filled with murders, whoredoms, blasphemies, every kind, in the black catalog that will manifest in the Anadoluvian world, or Sodom and Gomorrah, until the whole earth, earth groans under its abominations, and the heavens weep, and all eternity is pained, and the angels are waiting the great command to go forth and reap down the earth. This testimony I bear to all nations under heaven, and I know it is true by the inspiration of Almighty God. So some of us, some of the righteous will be slain. We've already seen that. Um, we are living as in the days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, like clearly we are. Um, and the, the heavens weep for us. Um, and for the righteous, we know that. And that's very reminiscent to Enoch. I love Enoch. Um, and his story, but, um, we can still be hopeful. Um, let's see, where's that one quote that I wanted to share with you guys. Okay. This is the one that I want to share with you. It says, uh, this is Brigham Young. He says, do you know that it is the 11th hour of the reign of Satan on the earth? Jesus is coming to reign and all you who fear and tremble because of your enemies cease to fear them and learn to fear to offend God, fear to transgress his laws, fear to do any evil to your brother or to any being upon the earth, and do not fear Satan and his power, nor those who have only power to slay the body, for God will preserve his people. I love this. Oh, Brigham Young is just so, he's just like a spiritual stud, right? Uh, but he's saying, don't fear Satan 
or your enemies or these evil, wicked people, even those who have the power to slay the body. Remember um, that death is sweet. It might be painful, it might be awful, but in the end, it is a sweet thing. So we should not fear Satan. We should only fear God. Um, let's see, is there any more that I want to... I have so many guys that didn't make it. I don't know. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end with um, some scriptures um, to give, give you guys motivation and... Um, and help. So these scriptures are super duper important to me. These are the scriptures that my missionaries gave to me back in the 90s um, when I first joined the church when I was a new convert. And all and all of these scriptures are going to relate to this topic. Okay, and this then that will be the end of the video. Okay, my elder Killian, he gave me this when I was struggling because I was getting persecuted heavily by family and friends after I joined the church. They would make fun of me and um, some of them stopped being my friend because they thought, well, Beth thinks she's better than everybody, um, which was not the truth. But Elder Killian came over and he gave me this these scriptures. I'm just going to read just um, a couple of them. Um, it says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So he gave me this scripture because I was, I had family. I had um, aunts and uncles and siblings and just friends, people who were just persecuting me. And he was basically, Elder Killian was telling me to take up my cross and bear it and and just be a light, right, to them. Um, we don't want to Bible bash or do anything like that, you know. But um, we want to do our best to um, give people hope and just love them. Just love them. Okay, the next one is when, um, when I first joined the church. Well, months after I joined the church, I started having nightmares. You guys know I'm a dreamer, right? And so... Um, some of these were, were just awful. And so my missionaries, um, Steve and Derek gave me two scriptures about the devil that gave me strength. And this goes right along with today of what we're dealing with. Um, the devil, the adversary, and, and his minions, whether, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, they're roaming the earth, right? So let me read these two scriptures. Actually, this one I have memorized. It's the very first scripture I ever memorized. Um, it says, and now my sons, remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shaft and the whirlwinds, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe, because of the rock upon which ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation wherein if men build, they cannot fall. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah. Okay. Um, and then this one, wait, where's it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Here it is. So this one Derek gave to me and he, this one is about Moroni. And this one is also very, very powerful. Um, and it says, and also that God would make it known unto them whether they should go to defend themselves against their enemies. And by so doing, the Lord would deliver them. And this was the faith of Moroni and his heart did glory in it not in the shedding of blood, but in doing good and preserving his people, yea, in keeping the commandments of God, yea, in resisting iniquity. Yea, verily, verily, I say unto you, if all men had been and were and ever would be like unto Moroni, behold, the very powers of hell would, sh would have been shaken forever. Yea, the devil would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. Oh, that's so powerful. So we want to put on the full armor of God like Moroni. And we want to love people um, and be patient with people. And the devil will not have power over us if we hold true to the iron rod, the, the commandments, the scriptures. If we do these things, um, we will not be moved. And, and if we fall, then we repent and we keep going, right? And then the last one, this last one, um, is the one, this is still, this is good, 
for now and for the millennium, right? This one. Um, Derek gave me this one too. It says, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And so who are creatures? That's us. That's, that's um, humanity, right? Paul says, he teaches us that we should become a new creature in Christ, right? So to sum up, guys, yes, there's wickedness everywhere. And yes, some of us were, will fall. Whether we fall spiritually or physically, we can repent. But if we fall physically, that can be sweet if we are prepared. If we have a testimony of God, we need to put on the full armor of God and love people and do our best to preach. Doesn't mean you have to go and knock doors. Um, although you could do that with the missionaries. I do that sometimes. Um, but you can lead by example and people will say, why is, why is that person? There's something different about that person. Why are they like that? Um, guys, if we do these things, we will be blessed and we will be happy. I know that that's true in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.